Hey everyone, it's Anais and welcome back to Draw Curiosity. This is a slight Anais from the future for the rest of this video um, because it's the second part to the previous video in which I did a little tour of this sketchbook. However, whilst I was editing it, I realised that I made it a little bit too long and decided just to turn it into two videos. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I would recommend watching it or you could watch this video and if you enjoy it, then I'd also recommend watching the first one because there's no overlap between the two pop-ups. The concepts are different. I tried very hard to make the pop-ups completely different. So if you enjoy this one, you'll enjoy the previous one. And if you enjoyed the first part, I think you'll also enjoy the second part. Secondly, I wanted to say thank you so much for the really kind comments on the previous video. I have read them and I found them very touching. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thirdly, my parents found a couple more pop-up cards since I asked them if they had any lying around the house for the previous video, so I said I would include them in the introduction to this one. So here are a couple more creations that I made whilst growing up with my parents. And finally, just a very quick refresher as to what this is all about. Basically, during October, I wanted to take part in this challenge known as Inktober in order to get out of a small mental health rut. But I took part in a slightly altered version. Traditionally, Inktober, you're given a daily prompt and you have to come up with some sort of drawing with it. In my case, firstly, I wanted to take alternative prompts that were from smaller and lesser known creators. And secondly, I didn't want to make a drawing, so instead I was to make some sort of pop-up or paper craft or interactive paper creation in some way. And preferably for them to all be unique, and I think I did succeed in that. And then, finally, bonus points if I was able to make it sciency, because then I'd have a little bit more to talk about when I made this video. So without further ado, let's just dive right back into where we left it off. Number 16 was moths, and obviously I had to bring my PhD into this one. Now, the part in the centre is supposed to be a resonant thorax, as most insects, including moths and other lepidopterans, have indirect muscles that deform the thoracic cavity, which make the wings flap. And you'll also notice the wings are disproportionately small, and honestly this is because if I were to make the wings to scale and also include the head and the abdomen, well, this model wouldn't fit in the notebook anymore after being folded up and it wouldn't behave the way it does. But I still wanted the wings to look pretty and for it to somehow represent what I was trying to show. Number 17 was also for October, cat and bunny. So I made a set of cosplay items for this happy frog. So here we go, there's uh, cat ears and bunny ears. Number 18 was cards, so I decided to make a jack-in-the-box. The spring is a little bit less explosive than I had hoped for when I made it, but there is still a locking mechanism and you kind of get the concept that I was aiming for. Number 19 was hallucinations. Thinking of mind-altering phenomena that could possibly happen to a snail, I basically remembered parasitized snails, so here's a snail hallucinating an oversized parasitoid wasp. Number 20 was fly venation pattern, again, as a biologist who studied her PhD in this subject. I tried to make this as accurate as possible. I actually remember I wrote a MATLAB program back in the day that automatically detects fly venation. So I basically made the string model of a fruit fly's wing, and I tried to encompass the whole variety of wing shapes across different Drosophila species by allowing different ranges that the string can be moved across. I'll say it was a very cute idea, it wasn't actually as obvious or practical in practice, I think this would work a lot better if it were pinned on a cork board, but again, we're here for the concept, not the execution. Number 21, this is a fun pop-up one, was Labyrinth Laboratory. So here's a 3D pop-up laboratory. 
Now, I originally wanted to make a laboratory mouse maze, but then the skeleton I made for this maze actually reminded me of the old chemistry lab from my school. So I just replicated it here. I also ran out of time, so there weren't too many identifying features that would make it look like a traditional lab rather than a classroom, but trust me, this is a lab. And nonetheless, I tried to distract from my shortcomings with a pun. Number 22 was teeth and fangs, so I try to think of a creepy animal and here's my rendition of a lamprey with its circular mouth and teeth. Number 23 was sleep. This one is so smooth. Now here the eyes are awake, but when they go to sleep, they start dreaming. It's a Venetian blind style of card and I've always wanted to make one of those crossfade style effects and I'm actually so happy it worked out so well. I'm so proud of this one. Just look at it. You go to sleep and the eyes start dreaming. Number 24 was shapeshifter. So I had this idea to make a shapeshifting origami beast. Again, due to the time limit, it's more of a concept than a perfect execution, but each arm can be switched between two options, as well as the legs, the tail can flip in and out, and so can the head, which is supposedly a dog and a chicken head. The jury's out whether it was very effective or not. Number 25 was social media. I wanted to make a piece that reminded me of different filters and frames that photo editing apps use to edit and modify photos. So here are three different ones with this character I cut out from a mask box. And also random self promo again to follow my Instagram if you're so inclined. Number 26 was woven. This, I believe, is actually my only non-interactive piece that I've made. I originally thought I could hide a secret message on the strips and then reveal them by pulling out the different card pieces, but in truth it actually ended up being woven too tightly for that to be possible, which means it was well made, but not very interactive. And also the pieces of card I cut out, they ended up being actually the perfect length for a tight fit. This one here at the bottom was an attempt to make a three-way one that sort of looks like superimposed cubes, but it didn't turn out too well and I ended up just giving up halfway. But I still think it looks pretty interesting, so I will accept it. <laughs> now, number 27 was actually a prompt from a friend of mine who really liked the Forbidden Room one and thought it would be fun if I tried to make one with a Venus flytrap eating a fly and make some sort of escape room. I had this idea to make a Venus flytrap pop up with a fly trying to narrowly escape its closing jaws, and honestly, I think I just about pulled it off quite well. Number 28 was also a prompt from another friend, which was Shy. So here is someone coming to visit a house asking after someone, and as soon as they enter asking after this person, the shy person runs away through the back door. Number 29 is distorted. So here is a long, long snail. Number 30 is dream costume. So here is a scruffy me and a done up me. Although I'll be completely honest, although I do dig this fictional outfit I've created for myself and of course the pink hair, I wouldn't necessarily say this is my dream costume. I just wanted to make something that looked quite obviously different. And last but not least is number 31, which was mitochondria and trick or treating. So I decided to combine the two. And here's a very cheeky mitochondria challenging you to a trick or treat. If you acquiesce and you give it some candy, all is good. In fact, the mitochondria will gladly make ATP from the food you have given it. Or as depicted with this Dysol sticker, an overjoyed duck eating a sweet dessert. On the other hand, if you reject its advances and say no, then you get mitochondrial metabolic disease instead as the duck is unable to access any sugary treats and turn its sugar into ATP. It got dark. I know, what a way to end this video. Anyway, and there you go. Those are indeed all of the 32 pop-ups that I made during October. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I'm guessing if you've made it this far, you probably did. It's true that this is a slight deviation to what I normally make, but it is a raw curiosity, which is usually a little bit off-brand. Also, lots of people think that raw curiosity is about drawing and perhaps slightly more creative things than I usually make, so again, I don't think it's entirely off-brand. And ultimately, it is about things that draw my curiosity, and honestly, 
this clearly did. So hopefully you enjoyed it. The next video will be a more traditional one, but if you liked this, maybe, maybe I'll do more of them because I had quite a lot of fun doing this. Anyway, I'm rambling on too much. So as ever, thank you so much to my wonderful, amazing Patreons on Patreon for supporting my content. As always, thank you so much for watching me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.